Hey YouTube, today I'm reviewing a film called The Window. It was released in 1949, uh, stars Bobby Driscoll, famous child actor and sadly later heroin addict, uh, Barbara Hale, who most of you probably know from Perry Mason, Arthur Kennedy, Paul Stewart, and Ruth Ruman, who's well known for her role in Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on Train. Directed by Ted Titchleff, who is perhaps better known for his work in cinematography, the film incorporates elements of noir and, despite the generally sad story, actually has a great feel-good ending. I just had to smile throughout the film at the 40s-slash-50s lifestyle depicted in the movie, which may seem cheesy now, but, you know, during the baby boomer, baby boomer uh, period, uh, life was good, pretty much, or that's how people wanted you to think it was. Uh, so yeah, and how Bobby's character, Tommy, he's similar to middle-aged boys portrayed in other 50s programming, such as Leave it to Beaver, or you have, you know. Uh, the movie's basically about the 10-year-old boy, Tommy, <coughs> played by Driscoll, who's a well-known liar who witnesses his upstairs neighbors commit a murder. Due to the boy who cried wolf effect, nobody believed Tommy, and this nearly cost him his life at the end of the film. Critics... Critics consider this film to be Tesla's best known and critically acclaimed among his direction credits and it's easy to see why. Uh, the movie may not have the symbolism or hidden imagery of more well-known murder thrillers such as Hitchcock's Rear Window, but it's a fun, effective thriller that actually predates Rear Window by five years. I personally noticed similarities to other films with a similar premise such as Night of the Hunter. Now this movie is not without its detractors of course. For instance, we're left to guess and fill in the puzzle as to why Tommy's neighbors killed a man. Roman's character, Gene Kellerson's fate, is left hanging in the balance somewhat. It's not even really all that clear at the end of the movie if Tommy's parents actually believe him or not. Or if that scene was just added to the end to the, to the already kind of peachy, down-to-earth, G-rated vibe of the movie. Um, but however, these life flaws can be overlooked due to the film strengths. I would rate it three and a half out of four stars, and I think it's one of Driscoll's best performances. It's also nice seeing Ruth Roman's character in this film and contrasting her to Strangers on a Train. She does look quite different here, almost unrecognizable. But again, this was like six or seven years before Strangers on a Train. So. It's also interesting contrasting Paul Stewart's character with his more famous roles in Citizen Kane and Kiss Me Deadly. This film was also used as a vehicle for Barbara Hale, who by the late 40s had already established herself as a leading lady, whose general film career would last into the mid-50s before she began to focus more on Perry Mason. Bobby Driscoll's story after his film career ended is tragic. Uh, he did marry, but that was short-lived. In the 60s, he moved to New York to pursue a career in theater, but that never panned out. He then pursued a life as an artist in associated association with Andy Warhol, but his addiction to narcotics and heroin pulled him down into the underground, where he died sometime in late 67 or early 68, and wasn't identified until around 70. So often these child actors have ended up this way. It really is tragic. Anyway, so today's review was short and sweet. Uh, plan on hopefully doing a review every day for a while now. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go on and uh, just have a good one.